Sige. Wait lang. Ayan. Yeah, we are recording this now. So, chapter 6 is about testing hypothesis. So, we will be... Um, actually, we will just have, have a review regarding the null and alternative hypothesis. And then... Um, we will be having also a review on the procedure for hypothesis testing. And then for the continuation of this lesson, we will differentiate between one-tailed and two-tailed tests and distinguish between type 1 and type 2 errors in hypothesis testing. So a little review when you say hypothesis, this is a proposition or, an, or a set of explanation of something or a group a specific group of person or object or phenomenon. Uh, when you say hypothesis, you are giving an educated guess or a tentative solution to your problem at hand. So we are conducting research most of the time because we have a problem and then we want to um, solve our problem. So sa pag-solve ng ating problem, uh, we will be proposing um, a tentative solution and then um, we call that hypothesis and then after that we will be testing if our hypothesis is true or not okay so um, a review also of the characteristics of our hypothesis when we do hypothesis it should be clear and precise um, and the most important thing is it is capable of being Tested. So we cannot give a decision, we cannot give a decision whether to accept or to reject our hypothesis if we cannot subject it to any test. And then it should be related to our variable. So whatever variable we have in our research, dapat related ang atu ang hypothesis. And then must be limited in scope and must be specific. So kung ano yung problem natin, yun dapat yung ating bibigyan ng solution sa ating hypothesis. And um, it should be measurable and at the same time time-bounded ta. Since for example sa research, hindi pwede na um, wala tayong uh, what do you call that? Ti time frame kung uh, kailan tayo start and then hanggang kailan yung ating research. And then it must be stated in very simple terms, um, especially sa atin na we are in the medical field. When we do research, we really have to use terms that even ang mga non-medical related na mga persons can relate and can understand. And then it must it must be consistent with most non uh, known facts and most uh, sorry this one is na ulit na no? but anyway must be testable within a reasonable time and must explain the facts which most need explaining so review lang sa characteristics ato ang hypothesis question so far about this ano Wala. So last time also we have uh, we have discussed categories of our hypothesis. The first one is based on their formulation. So based on how we formulate our sentence or our hypothesis. So we have two: the null and the alternative hypothesis. And the other category is based on direction. So that's directional and non-directional hypothesis. But in research, uh, we mostly use the null, the null hypothesis, wherein we will be stating our hypothesis on uh, in the negative form. Negative form siya, uh, like ang null hypothesis kasi it's a statement wherein you are declaring na there is no significant difference for example, you have different types of uh, you have different groups in your study, and then pag gumawa ka ng null hypothesis, you are declaring na walang difference ang mga grupo mo sa iyong research. Or for example, you have a drug that you want to test kung effective ba siya or not. Pag null hypothesis, you are declaring na it's not effective, so wala siya effect. Um, so negative on the negative form siya. So mato na uh, examples na kung gihatag last time like this one, giving feedback does not improve learning. So 
you are testing here whether giving feedback can in, improve learning or not. But when you say null hypothesis, it should be an, in the negative form, meaning walang effect yung feedback when it comes to learning. And then another example, the two groups do not differ in their response to the method of teaching. So you have one group and then another group uh, receiving two types of two methods of teaching but pag i express mo, express mo siya sa null, uh, null na form negative siya meaning wala silang difference and then ito yung sinabi ko kanina sa pharma naman na side when you make a null hypothesis like for example you have two drugs drug A and drug B for a certain condition then you will be stating there that there is no significant na difference between those two drugs that's null, negative form siya. But if you want to state your hypothesis in the positive na form, then we call it alternative hypothesis. That is why these two belongs to the category na based on their formulation. How did we formulate the sentence? Kani negative, this one is positive. Okay? So pag positive, meaning you are confirming na like your intervention has an effect or your drug is really effective. So, gibaliktad lang siya at ng mga sentence na to on the previous slide, gibaliktad siya sa positive na form. So, this time we have here giving feedback improves learning. That's how you state the alternative hypothesis. But again, sa research, most likely we will be using the null hypothesis. So, we will be testing whether we are going to reject the null or accept the null hypothesis. Okay? Uh, but uh, we have another category of hypothesis. Now, this time it's based on direction. So we have the so-called non-directional hypothesis and the other one, the directional hypothesis. Pag non-directional hypothesis class, um, this will predict that there will be a difference between the two groups but does not specify how the groups will differ. So, like, moingon ka nga, there is a significant difference between drug A and drug B. Kato lang, uh, moingon lang ka nga na sila difference, but you don't know uh, how, do, how do they differ. Paano sila naging different from each other? So, pag wala ni mugi state kung paano sila naging different from each other, we call that non-directional hypothesis. And then, when we do testing, we will be using a two-tailed test. So, two-tailed test na siya. Kasi remember our graph sa distribution? Diba? It's a bell-shaped graph. Wait, let me write. So, this one. It's a bell shape. Sa tunga ato ang mean, median, and mode. So, when you say non-directional hypothesis, since you are not declaring kung asa padulong ang imuhang difference, then there is a possibility na it's going to the left or going to the right. That is why two-tailed test is done. Okay? Noted. Now, for the directional hypothesis naman, um, there is still difference between two groups, but you will now specify paano sila naging different. So, you will identify a directional hypothesis when you see these terms. So, for example, there is greater na term, less, lesser, better, or worse. So, you know kung asa, there is a direction there is a direction kung paano sila naging different. So this time, since naatay um, direction kung asa padulong ang ato ang testing, then we will be using a one-tailed test. So later, we will be doing uh, two types of test, the one-tailed and the two-tailed test. So example learning directional hypothesis is, for example, um, you have two drugs, drug A and drug B for hypertension. So if you state your hypothesis like this, na drug A is more effective than drug B, directional hypothesis na siya. Meaning, uh, we are in favor of the drug A kay mas effective siya for you kaysa sa drug B. That's an, that's a directional hypothesis. Pero pag maingon lang ka na um, there is a significant difference between the effect of drug A and drug B, 
non-directional to siya. Kaya na nai- difference pero you don't know kung asang mas effective sa ilaha. Nakuha ang difference sa directional and the non-directional. You have questions, class? Wala. Natulog na niya ako, mga estudyante. Natulog na mo ba siya? Wala, ha? Ma'am, pag directional ma'am. hypothesis, good, ma'am. May difference, ma'am, no? Pero may specific reason. Yeah. Uh, pag, pag directional hypothesis, like you have na ay difference. Pwede po siya. Uh, na siya ay difference, pero na siya ay um, direction kung asa padulong ang difference. Tapag mo ingon ka na kani mas better ni siya na option kaysa sa second option. So you are in favor of the first option. Na siya direction. It's going to the first option. That's directional hypothesis. Pero pag may ngun lang ka nga na ay, uh, na ay difference between the two options without stating kung um, asa ang better sa ilaha or asa ang worse sa ilaha, then non-directional hypothesis na siya. Okay? Did I answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Anything else? Wala. Wala na. Sige. So, let's move on to the errors in hypothesis testing. So, di ba, we are formulating our hypothesis. After that, we will be testing it if tama ba siya or dili. Now, um... When we make our conclusion, uh, napud tayo mga errors na ma-encounter sa pag-test nato sa ato ang hypothesis. So we have like this, results of the study here, and then the decisions here. Uh, I've told you a while ago na sa research, we are most likely, use, uh, we will be using the null hypothesis, mauna siya ang ato ang i-test whether we are going to accept it or to reject it. So, for example, sa results sa ato ang study, um, the null hypothesis is true. So, kung tinuod ang null hypothesis, then the correct decision is to actually accept it. Kay tama man siya, tinuod man siya. So, that's the correct decision. Sa conclusion, dapat makita na siya na the null hypothesis is accepted. However, if magkaroon ng error and ang researcher ang, ang nahitabo, do tama ang null hypothesis tapos gireject siya sa ano sa researcher that's the time na magkakaroon tayo ng error and this type of error is called type 1 error type 1 error siya it is where we reject the null hypothesis when it is supposedly correct or true type 1 error na siya now another thing uh, for example after after testing we have found out na the null hypothesis is false. Okay, the null hypothesis is false. So the correct decision dapat is to reject the null hypothesis. Dapat sa conclusion, was data na we are rejecting the null hypothesis because mali siya ingon sa atuang testing. Pero there will be times na the researcher may accept the null hypothesis na false man siya. So kapag kaingani ang case class, we call it a type 2 error. Okay? Or a beta. Type 2 error siya. Sige, ulito na to. Pag type 1 error, um, this, this is when we reject the null hypothesis when it is supposedly true. Tama dapat siya pag conduct sa study. Dapat tama ang null hypothesis. So dapat i-accept na to siya. Pero pag i-reject siya sa researcher, nagkaroon og error dito. We call it a type 1 error. Sa type 2 error naman, supposedly the null hypothesis is false. So the correct decision is to reject it. But there will be times na mag magmali ang ato ang mga study ato ang researcher sa pag-decide then uh, wala niya na reject but na accept ang false na null hypothesis again we call it a type 2 error 
Okay. So, questions about this? Wala. Wala. So, sa ano class, to get rid of the type 1 error, this is for type 1 error kasi most most likely, ang type 2 error kasi is hindi natin siya ma ma avoid sometimes or or ma prevent so for example um hindi mo talaga nakuha yung tamang answer supposedly hindi representative ng population ang mga answers ng iyong sample so supposedly false dapat yung null hypothesis natin pero na accept natin because of mali yung nagather natin na data. Wala kasi tayong magagawa dyan. But sa type 1 na error, we can do something about this by um, ano, making a decision when it comes to the level of significance. So kaning level of significance, we call it alpha. Uh, nag ang nag-decide ani kay ang researcher, this is set at the beginning of the study. And uh, when you say level of significance, this is the level in which we would like to limit the probability of making a type 1 error. So, butangan nato siya ug limit. Um, sa study kasi class, whether we do surveys or we do experiment, we will always give room for error. Butangan nato room for error class kasi dili man na siya 100% perfect ang ato ang experiment at the same time sa survey sa mga kanang mga questionnaires na ginahatag nato sa ato mga respondents we cannot assure also na 100% tama ilahang i-answer or they are being truthful sa ilahang pag sa ilahang pag-answer so na ay room for error din ha and kana siya na error ma fall na siya sa type 1 nga error wherein um, supposedly dapat tama ang null hypothesis pero ma-reject na to siya. Okay? So, paano ni siya? Typical values of our level of significance can be 0 0.05, 0 0.01, or 0 0.001. So, actually, ano ni siya? Ang meaning ane, you have there 95% Kung, kung 0 0.05 ha, 0 0.05 at ang giset na level of significance. Ang meaning, Ana, 95% uh, atong confidence when it comes na nag-believe na na tama ang ato ang makuha nga result. And then the remaining 5% will be for the room sa error. mo na siya ang 0 0.05. And then pag 0 0.01, so, man, eh, siya 1. 1% lang atong ginahatag nga room for error. So, din ha karun, nag, nagkaroon ang dif difference ang, ang mga experimental na study o ang mga social sciences na study. So, sa pharmacy class, when we are talking about the effect of drugs, pag itest na nato siya sa experiment and then i-analyze na nato ang result sa ito ang experiment, most likely, ang iset na to nga room for error is just 1%. Kasi we are dealing with drugs, we are dealing about life. So dapat biliing ato kadako ang errors ato ang study. So when we test our hypothesis, we are just giving 1% dito sa error. And 99% mag-believe ta na tama ang results ato ang experiment. But for social sciences na mga studies, kanang mga nagahatag og survey nag or nagakandak og survey using a questionnaire uh, most of the time they set their level of significance at 0 0.05 okay so they they are giving 5% na room for error or limit sa ano probability of making a type 1 Errors. So, Mana inyo hang tandaan ha. When you are going to conduct a study and then mag naanatay result na human na ang experiment or na human na ang pagkandak o survey, uh, mag analyze na ta sa ato ang study. So, before ta mag analyze uh, at the beginning, kailangan iset nato ang ato ang level of 
significance. So, pag-abot sa mga experimental na study, we are more strict kay 1% lang ato ang ginaset na error. So, labaw na kung 0.01. Grabe na gina siya ka-strict na we are not allowing rooms for errors in 0.001 na lang. Okay? So, again, type 1 error class or alpha error takes place when we reject our null hypothesis which na supposedly tama siya. So, this one is uh, actually considered more serious and kailangan na to siya i-avoid. Mauna nga, ano, um, nag-set ta o level of significance at the start of our study. Now, si type 2 error naman uh, takes place when we accept the null hypothesis na supposedly it is false. So, mostly, ang um, type 2 error uh, nag- nag occur siya because of our sample size. Pag gamay kaayo ang ato ang sample size, most likely nag type 2 error ta na ma-accept na to ang ato ang null hypothesis nga dili man siya dapat tama. So for example, nagkanda ka og survey, nagpa-answer ka sa imuhang gihimo na questionnaire. Unya, gipa-answer lang nimo siya sa 10 ka tao. So do you think that 10 people is a representative of the whole population. So, dili, dili pwede nga sila lang sampo ang kuwaan nimo kung conclusion, makakonclude na dahil ka, makageneralize na ka sa imuhang tibuok population. So, if that's the case, na you have a very limited sample, you have a very small sample size, um, you are at risk of having this type of error na ma-accept mi mo imuhang null hypothesis na supposedly it's false. Okay? So, questions class before ta mag-discuss of one-tailed test. I'm checking the time. Kasi, ano, um, you have to get ready sa inyong mga calculator this afternoon kay magsugod na ta og testing. Okay? So, sa testing class, we have two types. Um, we have the one-tailed test, which is a statistical hypothe hypothesis test na uh, the values for which we can reject the null hypothesis are located entirely in one tail of the probability distribution. So, if your distribution looks like this, Divide nato siya at the center because we can see the mean, median, and mode. Um, when, when the probability of rejecting our null hypothesis is naa din ni sa isa ka side lang sa distribution, then we are doing the one-tailed test. Okay? One-tailed test ang tawag. Ana. So one-tailed test is also known as a directional test. So, himuo na to class ang ato ang directional test or one-tailed test if our null hypothesis is actually a directional hypothesis or ang atong hypothesis na lang, dili na lang siya null. So, for example, our hypothesis states that one mean or one method, one option, or one drug is greater or lesser than the other. Meaning na ay direction. So, ang inyong tandaan, before ka mo decide whether to do a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, you look at your hypothesis. If na siya direction, na siya mga keywords like greater, lesser, uh, more, more than, greater than, mga ingana na mga keywords, that's a directional hypothesis, then you will be doing a one-tailed test. Kasi na kay direction kung asa ka pa dulong. Kung sa distribution pa na, makita ni mo, ang imuhang probability is either on the right side or on the left side. So pag na ay direction, again, para madali atong life, if my direction sa hypothesis, then you do a one-tailed test. Okay? Okay. Now, sa two-tailed test, wait, slow button. 
Ayan. Now, let's let's continue for the two-tailed test naman. This is another statistical hypothesis test wherein the values for which we can reject our null hypothesis are located sa both tails of the probability distribution. So, wala tay direction din he. So, if this is your probability distribution, um, the values can either be going to the left or going to the right before we can either accept or reject our null hypothesis. That's two-tailed test or otherwise known as non-directional test. Okay, so when are you going to do the non-directional test? When the null hypothesis states that the two means are equal or there is no difference between the two means. Okay, so for example, uh, your hypothesis is like this. Boys and girls do not differ in mathematics ability. So, wala siya direction. Wala niya gistate kung kinsa ang mas taas o ability, ang boys ba or ang girls. But, nagstate lang siya na wala difference ang boys and girls. Wala siya direction. So, mana siya, gitawag po siya non-directional uh, non test or two-tailed test. Questions, class? Kaya pa. Una brain error na. Ang example, ansan ni? Ang example po dili siya null hypothesis. Actually, this one is a null hypothesis at the same time a non-directional hypothesis. Nganong gitawag siya null kasi it is ano formulated in the negative na form. Not the key keyword there is not. Pag makita ganit na ninyo not or no null hypothesis na siya. At the same time this is a null hypothesis at the same time class a non-directional hypothesis. Nganong non-directional? Wala kay direction. Ningon lang ka na walay difference between the boys and the girls. Walay direction. When, you, when I say walay direction, wala ka nagingon kung paano sila naging different. Kung mas taas ba ang ability sa lalaki kaysa sa babae or the other way around. So non-directional hypothesis siya. Anything else? Hala na. You can unmute ha anytime if you have questions. You can butt in. You can butt in sa discussion ako. You just remind me as ako nag-stop. The non-directional pa rin pag may difference pero wala na state. Yeah, actually if I... Wait ha, sulat, sulat na ko siya. Sulat na ko siya ulit. Boys and girls differ in mathematics mathematics ability. Okay, so for example, ing ani ako ang hypothesis. So this time, this is not a null hypothesis kay ano man siya, in the positive form. You cannot see no or not here. Ang tawag na to ani alternative hypothesis. Boys and girls differ in mathematics ability. Alternative hypothesis siya. Pero at the same time, non-directional hypothesis gihapon siya. Anong non-directional man? Ingon man siya na um, nag... nag Nagkaroon o difference between boys and girls, pero walay direction kung asa padulong ang difference. Okay? So, pwede siya null, pwede po siya alternative. So, tanawon lang nato kung naabay direction or wala. Okay? Ang, ang, ano, ang pag-decide whether to do a one-tailed test or the two-tailed test is ano based whether na ay direction or wala ato ang hypothesis. So, dili siya, wala siya dito nag... Uh, dili siya based kung whether your hypothesis is null or alternative. Ha? Dito siya sa ano, directional or 
non directional okay so actually ang ano ang null ang directional ug non directional is most likely an alternative hypothesis kay naman dito ang naay difference so six steps in hypothesis testing before ta mo conduct sa ato ang analysis, sa ato ang pag-test, mao ni siya ang mga steps na ito ang himuon. So the first one, we really have to state either the null and, alter and or alternative hypothesis. After that, we have to choose the level of significance. So state na na ito kung um, unsa ka daghan nga room sa error at nung i-allow whether to ano, um, set it at 5% or at 1%. Pero ama to, inyong tandaan ha, pag mga experimental na mga studies, most likely um, we are going to set it at 0.01 or 1% na probability of having a type 1 error. And then at the same time, we have to compute our sample size. So sa, ano, sa start sa ato ang discussion sa prelim, I have I, I have uh, told you na it will be impossible for us to reach all the members of our population. Thus, we will only do sampling. And before that, we have to compute our sample size. Okay, so pag nanatay sample size, we will determine, uh, mag-conduct na ta sa atong ano, sa ato ang test or sa pag-gather sa atong data. And then once we have our data na, then we will determine the appropriate test statistic na atong gamiton. And then actually before that, the sampling distribution. And then de determine the critical values. Mainly we have three criteria for our critical values wherein sa critical values class, uh, we will use this one uh, in deciding whether to accept or reject our hypothesis. So we have three. The significance level na set na nato na at the beginning at the beginning of the hypothesis testing, and then the degree of freedom also. So we will discuss later what is the degree of freedom. And what, uh, one or two-tailed test, uh, we will decide whether to use the one-tailed or the two-tailed test. And then it determine ito ang critical values. We will be collecting the data and compute the value. The, this one is the critical value of the test statistic. If makita na na nato siya, then we will decide whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. So actually, dili pa nini siya ma-appreciate hang to dili ta mag-conduct kung test yun. So, ano siyang mga next na slides later. Okay, we will be doing this steps. Okay? But before that, um, in statistics class, mo ni inyo hang pirmi ma-encounter na value, we call it the p-value. So again, ma-encounter ninyo ni siya pirmi na value, the p-value. Uh, this is obtained from the hypothetical distribution of scores and probability associated with the critical value. Like when we use the softwares like the SPSS and the JASP software, it will really give you a p-value based on your data and then based on the distribution dito sa graph and the critical value na ma-compute. So uh, when you say the p-value, it is actually the probability that the data would be at least this inconsistent if the assumption is that the hypothesis is true. Okay? Bawal lang sa niyang ano ha, definition lang sa 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 p-value and then later on as we move on with the test, uh, we will know the importance of this p-value and how are we going to use this when we want to make a decision whether to reject or accept the null hypothesis. So pag p-value class, this will just tell us the probability na ang ato ang data is this inconsistent if our assumption, if ang gusto na to i-believe is atong hypothesis is inuod. Okay? So, kanang p-value class, na ano siya, ano, syempre na siya value, no? 
So if the p value is greater than 0 0.10, then no evidence against the null hypothesis. Again, pag if it's greater than 0 0.10, there is no evidence na mali imuhang null hypothesis. Meaning your data na na-collect is most likely consistent with your null hypothesis. So kailangan ni mo i-accept imong null hypothesis. Pag-ingan eh. But if your p-value is lesser than 0 0.05 and at the same time lesser than 0 0.10, um, there is a weak evidence against your null hypothesis and most likely your data your data or collected data are in favor sa alternative hypothesis. But actually, gikan din he hang tud sa baba uh, in favor na siya sa alternative hypothesis. So pag ang p-value na na-compute is gikan din he 0 0.05 padulong sa 0 0.001 then the decision is to reject the null hypothesis and accept your alternative hypothesis. Pero if it's greater than 0 0.10, that's where we accept our null hypothesis. So for example, you have two hypotheses, HO and HA. Sa HO, there is, syempre, in the negative form, there is no significant difference between drug A and drug B. And then, ang imuhang alternative hypothesis, there is a significant... I hope you can still read my writing sa screen. Between drug A and drug B. So, mo naman ilang ilahang difference, di ba? The no. So, for example, nag test na ni gamit og software. Example, the JASP software or the SPSS. And then, ang computed na p-value mo, sulat man na siya dito sa table, the computed p-value is 0 0.955. Mo na siya imuhang computed na p-value. So, let's look at the table. Asa na belong si 0 0.955. It is where? Here. This one. The p-value is greater than 0 0.10. Greater man just sa 0 0.10, di ba? So, ang meaning, Anna, pag, if this is your p-value after doing the statistical testing, then you have to what? No evidence of against the HO, meaning you have to accept your null hypothesis. Meaning, ang tama ani kay kani. I-accept ni mo na there is no significant difference between drug A and drug B. And then you have to reject this. Kay tama naman eh. So in making a conclusion, tingon ka, na parehas lang ang effect ni drug A and drug B. Kay i-accept ni mo si null hypothesis based on the computed p-value. Okay? So, kanang p-value that is true for all statistical testing? Like, you do the t-test or you do the ANOVA, the ending there, you will have the p-value and then you will be using the p-value sa inyuhang decision of whether to accept or reject your formulated hypothesis. Okay? Questions so far? Wale? Nag-loading pa? <laughs> okay. So far, so far, or so far, so good? Basig like so far, so far na ta, ha? So, um, let's move away sa mga technicalities ng mga terms, no? Uh, P-value, mga yung ana. Um, ato siyang sugdan with the test para mas ma-appreciate ninyo siya. Wait lang. Uh, 
Ah, wala. No, no, no. Dilipan niya siya kasali sa quiz ugma. Ako ang quiz tomorrow is purely the chapter 5. Katong norma, the distribution of data. So I hope that is clear, ha? Sige. So the first statistical test na pwede na to gamiton sa pag-analyze sa ato ang data is the Z-test. So, na-mention mo na ko kagaya na T-test, ANOVA, but we will start with the Z-test. Okay? So, a, a Z-test is a parametric test. So, remember sa normal distribution, kapag ka normally distributed imuhang data, then you are going to use a parametric test. But if your data is not normally distributed, then you are going to use the non-parametric test. Now, one example of a parametric test is the Z-test. So you will just use the Z-test if your data is normally distributed. Okay? So mo na siyang first, ha? You are going to use the Z-test if your data is normally distributed. Now, When are you going to use the Z-test pa? This is used to compare the two means. The sample mean and the perceived population mean. Ulito na ako. When are we going to use the Z-test? The first one, dapat normally distributed ang data. Number two, you are going to use the Z-test when you want to compare the two means. Kung saan yung duha ka means? Mean ni sample o mean ni population. Therefore, if you don't know the mean of the population, dili ni mo magamit si Z-test. Again, kailangan ni mo ang sample mean o ang population mean. And then, um, actually, pwede po nimo siya gamiton si Z-test if you are just going to compare the two means, two sample means, like you have two groups of samples, pwede po nimo siya um, gamiton si Z-test as long as they belong to one population. Nakuha? And number four, Z-test is used when the samples are equal or greater than 30. Pag daghan kayo mong sample mo, sobra siya o 30, then you will use the Z-test. Okay? Questions, class? So far, let us admit first. Nay, sige mo ka-disconnect. May problem ba with the ano? With the connection? Wala. Okay, Rano. Sige mo, gudog ka. Pwede mo rag na nag-in or nag-in and out sa conference. But anyway, sige lang kayo. This is being recorded para pwede ninyo siya i-review. So let's talk about the Z-test for one sample mean. So ang Z-test, uh, one sample mean is used when the sample is being compared to the perceived population mean. Okay, so you have the sample mean. Nagganda ka ang survey, tapos kabalun na ka sa imuhang sample mean, imuha ng nakuha. The mean ha, the average. And then you know the population mean class. And then if the population standard deviation is not known, you can use the standard deviation. So that's as a substitute. So ang kailangan lang ni mo din hinga data is the mean sa sample, ang mean sa population, Siyempre ang sample size and the standard deviation. So our formula for the Z-test na one sample lang is this one. Z is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean times the square root of your sample size. Again, the Multiplied, uh, multiplied sa square root sa imuhang sample size divided by your standard deviation. So for example, nagkanda ka og survey. Ang pinakauna ni mong himuon is to get the mean. I-add ni mo tanan answers nila, tanan scores sa ilahang answers, and then you get the mean. But... but Use the Z-test if you don't know the population mean. Kailangan po ni mo ang perceived population mean. At the same time, syempre, kabalo ka sa imong sample size. So kung pila ka tao imuhang 
um, sample, kung pila ka tao ang nag-participate sa imuhang survey, for example. And then you also have to compute for the standard deviation. So, human naman tag-compute sa standard deviation, di ba? You know how to compute it. Pero if na kay 100 kabuok na na sample, kung nagmano-mano ka o standard deviation, mag dugay yung ka mahuman. That is why palabanta sa ato ang software class. So, when you want to to compute for the standard deviation, you have the freedom to use any software. You will get the same answer. Okay? So, these are the steps in solving the Z-test for one sample mean. Isa lang ka-sample, ha? So, determine the mean of the sample again. The standard deviation, and the standard deviation, this is of, I sorry, the standard deviation if the population is not known. So, kung, for example, you don't know the standard deviation of the population, then you also get the standard deviation of the sample. Next, you cannot compute for the z-test to so get the difference between the sample mean and the population mean and then again multiply it sa square root ni sample size. And then you have to divide it sa standard deviation. And then pag nakuha na ni mo ang z-score, we call it the z-score, compare the result of the table or the tabular value using the set level of significance. Okay? So, di ba yun ko na um, at, at the start of the hypothesis testing, you have to decide kung sa na level of significance ang gamiton. So, it can be sa table. This one is the table na gamiton na to ha, sa pag-decide. So, mag-decide mag ka whether to set the level of significance at 0 0.01 or set it at 0 0.05. And another decision that you are going to do is whether your test is a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. Okay? Kasi kasi may mga problem sa internet. And take note of this. This is our decision rule. If the Z computed value, take note ha, kay maghimo tag conclusion ani whether to accept or reject our hypothesis. If the Z computed value is greater, mas dako imuhang na compute na Z value or Z score compared to the Z tabular value. Mo niya mga tabular value class ha, kaning mga numbers na ni. Pag mas dako si z-score na na-compute kaysa sa score nga na sa table, you have to reject the null hypothesis. Meaning, dili tinuod, dili tama imong null hypothesis, so you have to reject it. Otherwise, kung mas dako si tabular value kaysa sa kay computed value, then you have to accept your null hypothesis. Ginawa sa taglalum kay murang daghan to siya na kailangan na to tandaan. Pero ano ha, um, since this is just a small na table, you really have to know it by heart. Pag abot sa t-test, di na ko mo require nga inyuhang memorize ng table. Kay murang taas kaayo ang table. Naku juga yung table sa t-test. Sa z-test lang kay we only have four values here. 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and whether your test is a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. So let me give you an example para ma-appreciate na to ang gamit ni Z-test. Okay? So example, the BRKPD company asserts that the average lifespan of their brake pads is at least 43,000 kilometers. So we are talking about brake pads here. Ang ilahang assertion is that the average lifespan of their brake pads is at least 43,000 kilometers. To ascertain the accuracy of this assertion, a jeepney operator puts these brake pads to their 50 jeepneys which got the average lifespan of brake pads at 41,800 
kilometers. So with a standard deviation of 2,580 kilometers, use the Z-test at 0 0.05 level of significance to determine if this claim is true. So i analyze na to ang problem. So na yung mga companies no, na naasila yung mga products and syempre naasila yung kanya-kanyang claim. So in this case class, this one is more on the ano nga side. Dili siya sa farm mga side ha, but I hope you can uh, you can understand paano ginagamit si Z-test for this. So naasila yung claim na ang ilang mga ginahimo nga product which is the brake pad, ang lifespan kay 43,000 kilometers sa pagdagan, okay? Kay brake pad man, brake pad sa ato ang mga sakyanan. So, karon, um, we have a jeepney operator na he wants to test if the lifespan jud ba sa atong brake pad kay 43,000 kilometer. So, gitest na niya, gibutang niya sa 50 ka jeepneys and then iyahanggi observe. And then afterwards, Sa, nakuha niya ang results sa iyahang observation, sa iyahang experimentation. For the 50 jeepneys, ang average lifespan sa brake pads kay 41,800 kilometers. And gi-compute po, gi-compute na ha, so no need na ta magmano-mano compute for the standard deviation. So the standard deviation nga nakuha ani is 2,580. So karon, gamito na to si Z-test Giset ang level of significance at 0 0.05 to determine if true jud ba ang claim sa company na 43,000 kilometers ang lifespan sa iyahang eh, sa ilahang brake pads. So muna siya ato ang ansiran. Now, ako alang sang i-exit ha kasi na ko gibuhat diri. Wait. Naman may copy aning slide, diba? I have already given the slide sa Schoology. You can download, the, download it anytime. This is how are we going to answer the hypothesis testing. I hope you can see it. Talako na to para mas mabasa. Okay, so sa hypothesis testing, what's the problem there? Ang problem na to, we want to know if tama ba ang assertion sa company that the average lifespan of the brake pad is at least 43,000 kilometers. That's our problem. We want to know if, if the claim is true. Now, we will be formulating hypothesis. Pwede null hypothesis, pwede po um, alternative hypothesis. So the first one, example na ko niha, nagbuhat na ko og example na hypothesis nga gibuhat based dito sa problem. So the null hypothesis here is, for me, na akong na-formulate, the average lifespan of the brake pad is not 43,000 kilometers. Kaingon man ang, ang company, 43,000 kilometers daw ang lifespan sa ilahang brake pad. So ang ako ang hypothesis, the null hypothesis, which is on the negative nga side, dili siya tinuod na the lifespan of the brake pad is not 43,000 kilometers. And then, um, for HA, alternative hypothesis is just the opposite. So the average lifespan of the brake pad is 43,000 kilometers. Now, sa problem na mention na naset na daan ang um, level of significance and that is 0 0.05. And then, ang meaning ZTV, that's the Z tabular value. Now, we will be using a one-tailed test here. A Z-test for one-tailed test. So, basig mga na mo, nga nung one-tailed test, ma'am, na di ba pag one-tailed test, it's directional. So, nga nung nahimo siyang directional nga test. Um, for me, nga nung one-tailed test ang gigamitin he, kasi actually, if, even though you cannot see words like greater than or more than, lesser than, but we have a direction here, which is 
um, naghatag ta og direction na ang average lifespan mismo sa brake pad, 43,000. That's our direction there. The 43,000. Padulong din ha ang atuang itest. Okay? So, muna siya nga one-tailed test. And, kaning plus and minus 1.645. Let me go back ha sa ito ang, sa ito ang slide. I have given you the tabular values here for the Z-test. So, giset na ito, di ba, at 0.05 ang ito ang level of significance. And since this is a one-tailed test, then our tabular value is plus and minus 1.645. Muna siya nga, gibutang na ko dito sa ito ang table. So, do not forget our decision rule, ha? If ang computed na z is greater than the tabular Z, you have to reject the null hypothesis. So let's see. Let's see, class, if it is really um, i-reject ba na to or dili. Ayan. So level of significance again is 0 0.05. Um, so since this is a one-tailed test, then at 0 0.05, our tabular value is 1.645. Let's, um, let's not have the p-value first because we cannot compute the p-value here. We can compute it unless we are using a software, any software. But since we are doing mano-mano here, manual computation ta, then takbangan sa nato C. P value. So, dirita mag concentrate kay Z test. What is again our formula sa Z test? The Z is equal to the mean minus the sasunod, population. population times the square root of the sample size divided by the Standard deviation. Um, you have a copy of the problem, right? Maglisod ko. Sige, balhin, balhin. Let us try to identify first the value. So, mga given lang sa. So, ang sample mean, what is the sample mean there? Can you look at the problem? The sample mean is the average para sa sample ng iyahang gikuha. So, let's can you please look at it? Diba? It's 41,800 kilometers. Mauna siya ang mean nga nakuha dito sa jeepney operator. Okay, let me see. Kaya saan na to? Yeah, yeah 41,800. Kajutin na naman siya mabalik. Okay. Next. How about the perceived population mean? When you say perceived population mean, it can be the claim of the company. Ha? Huh? Perceived population mean. Sa ilang mga ginabuhat, tanan break pads sa ilang ginabuhat daw, um, ang lifespan is 43,000. So that is the perceived population mean. Okay. How about the sample size? So pila ka jeepneys ang gitest for the brake pads. It is 50. Am I right? <laughs> Please look at the problem. Yes, ma'am. The 50, 50 right. Kajota. And our standard deviation is 2,580. So our standard deviation here is 2,580. If Dili given ang some ay ang population standard deviation you can always use the standard deviation of the sample. So let's compute. Let's compute now please get ready sa inyong mga kalkyo. So capital letter M is the sample mean so this is 41,800 minus this one the mu here is the perceived population mean that's 43 thousand and then i multiply nato siya sa, sa square root ni sample size which is 50 divided by our 
standard deviation 2580 so let's have this step by step 41800 minus 43000 this is negative 1200 and then i multiply na to what is the square root of 50 7.47 na Okay, 0 0.07. Kumplitohon na lang sa anak ko siya, ha? Para uniform tawag answer. Bili mangud bag uniform atong answer if mag-round off ta during the process. So, divided by 2,580. So, negative 1,200 times 7 0.07 0.7 1067812 the answer mm. here is negative 8,485.281374. Divided by 2,580, the Z computed value. Computed value ni siya, ha? Divided by 2,580. That's rounded off to two decimal places. Negative, negative 3.20. Okay, anyway, um, nagkaiba lang ta sa ano no, decimal. So sa ano na sa paground. So this is negative 3.29. This is our computed value. Computed na score sa Z-test. So that one, negative 3.29. So yeah, if you want to copy, you can copy. I'll give you time. Kaya ibaba na ako. Pag ibaba, magun na ako ni eh. uh, matabunan. Sige, well, copying. Do you have questions, class, sa pag-compute? Dili man siya lisod, no? Dili siya lisod na computation sa statistics. Kailangan lang dyan ni mo i-analyze yung hang problem. Sige. Sa so, baba ta. Matabunan mong ka ta. Oh, wait lang, ma'am. Wait lang. Sige, sige. Take note ha, the computed Z value here. Salat na na ko siya. Z computed value now is negative 3.5 29. Ma'am, two decimal places pa rin ang basis. Uh -huh. Pero you, re you read my, ano, ha, my instruction like for the quiz or sa exam, you really have to read the instructions. Kasi ibutang na dito kung pila ka decimals. Pero most of the time, it should be two decimal places. Done na? Sige, ka-disconnect ang human. Okay na. Let me clear the writing sa screen ha, kasi I cannot move it. Ayan. Basta let us, ano, let us remember the computed Z value here now is negative 3.29. Now, what is our decision rule again? If the computed value is greater than the tabular value, you have to reject the null hypothesis. Wait, idool na to siya. Para kita. Ay, iliday ko kabalo. Ayan. Let's admit them first. Sige. So, again, our decision rule here is if the computed value is greater than the tabular value, reject the null hypothesis. Our computed value is negative 3.29. Our tabular value is positive or negative 1.645. Now look at the conclusion I made. Since the computed value is greater than the tabular value, 
at 0.05 level of significance, the null hypothesis is rejected, which means that the average lifespan of the break, break bud is 43,000 kilometers. Nga naman siya. Um, you will be disregarding the science class kasi as you can see on the table, it's either positive or negative. But if the value, the number there is greater, greater than this one, greater than the tabular 1.645, then reject the null hypothesis. Ang sagani itong null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis is the average lifespan of the brake pad is not 43,000 kilometers. But the computed value is negative 3.29. It's greater than the 1.645. So you reject the null hypothesis, reject ni siya, and you have to accept the alternative. Na tama. Tama class ang claim sa company na ang, ang lifespan sa ilahang brake pad is 43 thousand kilometers based sa experimentation niya gihimo sa jeepney operator. Okay, so yes, given ang tabular value, if we go back to our slide, previous slide na to, this is our tabular value. Okay, this one. So paano to na, paano to na decide class? Diba? The level of significance is 0 0.05 and it's a one-tailed test because we have our direction which is the 43,000 kilometers. Ayan. And then this one. Uh, this one-tailed test and then under sa 0 0.05 so our tabular value na sundon is 1.645. Okay? Niya ang na-compute na to is 3.29. So it's greater than 1.645. So you have to reject your null hypothesis and accept your alternative hypothesis. So tama ang claim. Tama ang claim sa company. So pwede po natin niya gamitin class sa kanang. Sa ato ang drugs, for example. Example, the company will claim na the manufacturing company will claim na the drug will take its effect at approximately one hour. O na ilahang claim. Na gusto na to itest if tama ba ang ilahang claim. So maghimo tag null hypothesis na the drug will not take its effect at one, ay after one hour. After one hour sa administration ha. So kung inga na naman tay direction for that, the one hour, kung i-graph na to na, makita na to sa one part sa ato ang graph. So you'll be doing a one-tailed test there. Pwede ta mag magkuha og mga samples sa drug na ilahang gihimo and then we will test kung tinuod bang mo effect siya after one hour. Okay? Yes, constant, constant itong mga values dito. Um, di ba ang na-compute na to kay negative 3.29? Kasi it's either positive or negative man. So, uh, uh, pwede siya positive imong answer, pwede negative ang answer sa Z-score, pero ang imuhang tanawan is the number. If it's greater than 1.645, then reject the null hypothesis. Hmm? Questions? What time is it? Uh, it's almost time. It's 2.22. Ano siya kung malis din sa statistics kay Pirmi ko kulang og time because of the computation. So, Ani, since we have limited time, I'll be giving you assignment. Assignment. Kasi we only have two minutes left. Um, this one. Actually, na ako'y gihatag din hi sa ilalom. Though, I'll be also giving a copy of this sa inyo, ha? Practice ta. Practice. So, to exercise number one, you will be answering this using this format, ha? Para hanay. Hanay ato ang pag-handak o testing. So, this is the problem. A psychometrician review center claims that the reading comprehension test of their review we has an average of 
with a standard deviation of 8.9. If 40 randomly selected reviewees have an average of 85.8, use uh, Z-test to test the null hypothesis. So please use alpha na 0 0.05. Okay? The alpha is the level of significant. So muna siya ang problem. Uh, mo ni siya ang sample na itest na to. So you have to um, state what is our problem really here. And then you have to make your own hypothesis, both null and alternative hypothesis. And then the level of significance again, uh, please set it at 0 0.05. Disregard the p-value first because we are doing a manual com computation. But in the in the ano, software, actually, automatic ang computation sa p-value. And then here's the statistics. There is, this is where you will show your solution sa pag-conduct sa z-test. And then what is our decision rule again? You have to write here the decision, decision rule that the computed um, z-table, if the computed z-value is greater than the tabular z-value, then you have to reject the null hypothesis. And then based on the computation you have you have made, you make a conclusion. That is also true for the exercise number two. Pero you have to take note how you have to decide kung one-tailed test or two-tailed test inuhang gamiton. So that will be your assignment. At ni siyang answeran tomorrow. So, ano na lang, ano na lang, i-hatag na ko siya sa Schoology, okay?